with regard to the 50 employees, the, the problem is that national corporations and multinational corporations can easily have 50 employees here and will be in a better position to get the 8% preferential treatment than companies that are local. So I absolutely disagree that local companies will be the necessary benefactors of this. I believe that, uh, that the intent is to, is to create better competition for it's our local companies. That the mayor offered uh, and, and Mr. Krikorian and, and Mr. Park support uh, local preference. <clears throat> but to, to really have uh, the impact that it's purported to have, I think we need to tinker with it I'd like a little to bit. ask a question if anybody, uh, whether it's contract administration, whether it's CLA, CAO, um, anybody, please. Business team. Who's the business team work for? I am Brett Messing from the mayor's office. Oh, so you're with the mayor's office? Yes. What's your title with the mayor's office? Um, Chief Operating Officer of the Office of Business and uh, Economic Policy. So I work for Austin Butner and I'm senior advisor to the mayor. Okay. What's your name again? Your first name? Brett Messing. Brett? Brett. Uh, B-R-E-T-T. -T. Brett. Thank you, Brett. Um, my, my main question is this, is this particular motion, should it be enacted, would, would this apply, for example, to a bid that maybe uh, B of A was involved in? Or let's think of another large company, um, say Parsons. Parsons, they're a big engineering firm. Um, they're not headquartered in Los Angeles, although they probably have some workers in some office in, with an address that has Los Angeles in it, which is in the city of Los Angeles. Would it apply to them if that, if that was the case? It, it would apply to companies that, that employ Angelinos. And so, with all due respect to Councilman Alarcon, the intent of the preference is to create jobs for Angelinos, not to necessarily benefit LA businesses, but to create jobs for Angelinos, whether they come from LA based businesses or businesses that are not based in LA. Okay, but as the, before Mr. Alarcon, Councilmember Alarcon's motion, there's nothing in it that requires any creating of jobs, is there? We, in the motion? There's not a. There, there's no language in there that requires if they win the bid and they get the benefit of this 8% that they in fact create jobs. Well, it requires that they employ Angelinos, which is no, the But see, there's a big difference. Well, the, well, excuse the, me, excuse me one second. If I own a company and I have 100 employees already, okay. and I get a contract from the city of Los Angeles, and I get the benefit of being within 8% of the, the lowest bid, and they give it to me because I happen to be in that bid range, and I already have 100 employees, and I get that contract, there's nothing that requires me in this motion, if I get that contract and the benefit of that 8%, that I actually create jobs. Um, that is true both as to LA-based businesses and non-LA-based businesses that have 50 employees. I would point out that 30% of the municipalities and states across the country have local preference laws. Of, of, of different structures, none of them require additional employees See, that you're Brett, suggesting. That's, that's my point. Brett, as a policymaker, as I read this, as I read this, I don't agree that your main point that are, are the genesis of this motion and the purpose of this motion is so that when people win bids with the city of Los Angeles, that jobs are created. What I don't like about the motion, the way it's written right now, is that there's not a direct nexus requirement or proof that jobs were created for Angelinos if they get that benefit of the 8%. See, that's my point. You, you said it accurately when you said X number, and I'm not disputing whether it's 30% or not, but what I liked about what you said is that are, there are many municipalities that already have this kind of ordinance but you correctly pointed out, the language is different very likely than ours. And my point is, I don't think that the way the language is written on this one is ready for us to pass and start benefiting huge companies and small companies or what have you to be able to be non-competitive in my opinion and then get the benefit of that. However, not necessarily giving, creating jobs for Angelinos. That's where, I, I don't read that into this motion. I don't interpret that in this motion. I, I guess, Councilman, I, I would have two comments. Um, one is, is that the, the structure of our ordinance is 
modeled after Philadelphia, which is considered to be the best practice across the country. So we, we took a hard look at how local procurement has operated throughout the country and, and, and followed sort of the Philadelphia model. Uh, secondarily, one important role that local preference will play is not just in job creation, but in job retention. So when you have a company that's doing very poorly, the ability to get a city contract, whether they be an LA-based company or a national company, may enable them to retain and keep Angelinos working, whereby if they didn't get that contract, they would like fire, you know, a number of their employees. So I believe that if you if you put a requirement to add employees, I think you're gonna you're gonna reduce the effectiveness of this policy very meaningfully, to the extent that it, it, it will not achieve its objective. Well, uh, Thank you, I Mr. ran out of time, but I'll Perfect. push my button again. You and I are gonna have a little fun right now, Mr. Kirkwood. But I think what's so important, I'd like a local a local LA City uh, you know employee requirement for LA City employees. But that's not going to happen. I'd like all general managers to live in the city. That's not going to happen. I'd like to have more things in the city. That's not going to happen. But I think it's important what Mr. Kikorian has done, what Mr. Parks has stated, that we go forward at this point right now and constantly look at this stuff. This can evolve. I think we have to have a, more of a, a microscope on the, on the picture and use staff to look at things. The business team is, is, is focused to do that. My question to you is, what proves to us that Philadelphia's best practice, as you put it, is in fact a best practice and therefore we should adopt it? Um, before I answer that question, I'd just like to respond to Councilman Alarcon. I, ha I have in my hand the City of Philadelphia's local business entity certification application. And it says, I have a valid business privilege license during the preceding six months. So. I'm, I'm sorry, but your representation of what Philadelphia's ordinance is is, ordinance. is not correct. It's 18 well, months. Here's the ordinance. Well, I have the certification form, so maybe I you want to. This is the ordinance. Well, you guys argue on your time. The bottom line is, you have a document saying six months, and I don't dispute the fact that that document isn't real. And it appears that Councilmember Alarcon has a document, and I don't dispute that that's real. That's not real either. So the bottom line is, once again, here we are trying to push an ordinance in the second largest city of the country. We procure how much was that, Mr. Krikorian? One point two billion dollars. And this would actually apply to all of that one point two billion, I presume, right? Whether it's a hundred million dollar bid or a million dollar bid, et cetera. And if it's a hundred million dollar bid, that means somebody could have the latitude of eight million dollars and still get the bid if they qualify for these simple terms. Yet at the same time as Councilmember Alarcon, and I've owned a business in the city myself, what Councilmember Alarcon brings to all of our attention, which I think is something that we should consider, and that is the fact that when you're looking the larger bids, you're gonna look at multinational corporations that might have a smitten of employment here, but yet at the same time, they might have 100,000 employees around the world and they have a couple hundred employees in the city of LA and they beat out a business that had 500 employees in the city of LA, which is 90 plus percent of their employment base of that corporation. See, that's what I don't like about this. I think that it, what, it, what it happens is there's inadvertent consequences that will in fact hinder small and medium based firms that are actually based here in the LA region, giving jobs to Angelinos. And also, instead of having shareholders that are around the world, perhaps, like a multinational corporation, they benefit from that, and that money dissipates all over the world. But yet, when you have a mom and pop or a sole proprietor here in our region, much more of that money actually stays right here. So I think that the, the intent is wonderful, but I think the language isn't ready. It's not ready for my vote. I think that this ordinance is not ready for prime time. This ordinance is not ready for a vote of this council. That's the problem that I have with it. It needs more work, especially when you, sir, rightfully so, are waving a document saying it's six months, and a council member is waving a document. You're talking about the same exact thing, and he's waving a document saying 18 months. Why don't we verify these things? Why don't we make sure we have it right? Thank you, Mr. Cardenas. Mr. Krikorian. Just let me respond uh, briefly to Mr. Cardenas, um, who has presented a scenario suggesting that these large companies would somehow have an advantage over a small local company because of this preference. 
Of course, that would not be the case because the local company would apply, the small company would be entitled to the exact same preference. So yes, it's true that this would not equalize the playing field as for the efficiencies of scale or otherwise. It's not going to give an extra advantage to the small business, but it will certainly allow businesses large or small here in Los Angeles to compete more effectively against businesses that are in Riverside County or San Francisco or Anybody Indiana. Anybody here been to Philadelphia? <laughs> Independence Hall, where we crafted the Constitution, the room is half the size of this room. I would love to see those workers be LA City workers, not LA City employees, but guys who went to Franklin or Jordan or guys who went to uh, any school in LA, but they were all from the Empire. We gotta work harder to train our people to compete for those jobs. At the same time, it's very important. So I stand again to salute the great city of Philadelphia and their Eagles, but also to say vote for this. <laughs> you send this back to committee. We have Mr. Cardenas and then Mr. Krikorian. That was a motion, I second it. Was that a motion, Mr. Uh, Lagone, was that a motion? I, I mean, I, I don't see where it would be constructive. Um, well, then that's uh, not my question. I mean, what's 30 days? Would the, is the sky going to fall in 30 days? No, the sky is not going to fall in 30 days. So if, I mean, just to elevate everybody's comfort level, couldn't you allow it to go back to the appropriate for 30 days, and Mr. Kerkorian, would you would you afford them that accommodation? Well, and then we can move on. That's Mr. not 30 days, Mr. Westman. I, I think that it makes perfect sense to have item 10A sent to committee for further study and analysis. Um, but this matter that's before us has already been to committee. It's already been studied, um, and adding on last minute changes to it now, I think, d doesn't. I think we're I think we're ready to go with this.